Okay, so what I'd like you to do is sit in a way that allows your spine to grow tall. And one of the best ways to do that, this is kind of like going back to the, the basics, going back to the beginning, is to sit with enough height under your sit bones, under your pelvis. So I'll just show you. If I sit here, this is okay, but I do, I might have the tendency to do this. And this is my pelvis rolling backwards. So I don't want to do that. I want to be able to lift my pelvis. Because you can see, when my pelvis rolls back, my rib cage responds and goes forward. So what I want to do is put my pelvis so I'm balancing on the bottom two bones of the pelvis. And my spine will then grow up tall. It's hard to do that for me if I'm sitting like this. This is some effort and I can feel some gripping right here in the front of my hip joints. So if instead I take a blanket and I go a little bit higher, I'm even gonna take two blankets just to show you. I go two blankets and then sit down. I'm not gonna worry about the back of the chair. If you need the back of the chair, then you can, um, you can for sure go back. But you can see now my hips are here from they were more like this position and and my knees are now lower than that hip crease which allows now less opportunity for my pelvis to go back I actually have to try to make that happen whereas when I'm sitting higher like this my pelvis is elevated my knees are lower than my hips then I have a little bit more of a chance for my spine to have that, that alignment. And I should have done this first. Sorry, Janice. I just want to show you my friend here. I think we named her Joy last year. So here's the pelvis. So instead of it rolling back, we want it to sit up like this. And that's kind of the, the idea. I'll come a little bit closer so you can see. I like to use models like this so you get a sense so the relationship of your thigh bones to your pelvis changes let me go there oh, back she goes okay so then as you're sitting leaning on the back not leaning on the back if you're going to lean on the back of the chair wiggle your bum way right as close as you can to the back so that you can still have that lift and and you don't allow your pelvis to roll back I'm gonna sit forward because we're not gonna sit here for very long. And I wanna work on, this is something I started a long time ago. I wanna be able to work on my ability to hold my spine in this position. And that's important. It's gonna, it could get tiring for your body. Like you, the muscles of your, of your spine um, and your whole, around the whole spinal column might not be used to it. So kind of, if you need to take a break and lean back and let your pelvis go, then let it go. But I'd like you to sit here for a moment. If it's okay to close your eyes, close your eyes. If it's not, just kind of take your gaze, not your head dropping down, but your gaze. So your eyelids almost like half close and you allow yourself to turn inward. And the theme of the week that I'm going to carry through the whole week is returning because here we are returning to yoga together. And, uh, I'm happy to be doing that, have people around me again. So we're returning, returning to many things. We're returning to gathering again. We're returning today to a place within the center of the body. And I'd like you to think for a moment when I say we're returning to center, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you personally? If I were to say, we're going to return to center today. And this is really just a contemplation. There's no right or wrong answer. But what, what does that, how would you describe what we're doing today to somebody else who's not in the class? Well, we were to returning to center today. And they would say, well, what does that mean? What does it mean for you? Let's take a few moments to kind of go, well, maybe it's, I have no idea. In the yoga community, we talk a lot about centering ourselves. It's got to mean something to you for it to be um, valuable. <laughs> so as you're sitting here, let's begin to notice 
you can still come back to that, that contemplation throughout the practice. I can tell you what it means to, for me, but it needs to be something that, it's, that, that you make it yours. So as you're sitting here, eyes closed or eyes open, it doesn't matter. I'd like you to just have an experience of what your physical body feels like, an overall experience of, of sensations in your body. Do you have pain anywhere? Does anything feel really good anywhere? Does anything kind of feel neutral? You have, oh, I just could feel like a fly landing on my head or my nose. I can hear a fly in the room. <laughs> It's the season of the fly right now. So physical body, physical body. We will get moving, I promise, but I really want to spend some time like this, just observing, because this is one of the, the definitions that I use of yoga is the process of becoming more aware. And then let's look to another layer that might not be as easy to discover, but it's the energetic la la layer. So it's where your energy, and, and think of it as a sense of flow. So it could be connected to your breath. It could be, um, you know, I feel exhausted right now. I feel like I can't hold my spine up any longer. I can't hold my head up on top of my spine. It'd be that kind of an energy level. And just whatever it is for you. Think a little bit, if you can, feel beyond the physical body. What does your energy feel like? If you think about it, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a guidance, guidance here. Physical layer is on the outside. There is an energetic level around you, but we're moving towards this energy on the inside. Does, do you feel agitated? Do you feel calm? That would be the energetic level too something in between. And then we'll move on to another layer. I'm gonna say it's together, but you can look at them separately if it helps you. The mental and emotional layer of you. Because mind and emotions are really connected. You, you think something, you're going to feel something. You feel something, you're gonna think something about it. But if it's easier to separate them, what kind of state is your mind in right now? Is it active? Is it, is it present right here? With, is it, are you easily able to sit and observe? Or do you feel like, oh, I just want to move? Is there some agitation in your mind? Or is there a sense of calm in your mind? Is it quiet? Are there a lot of thoughts? And how does that affect how you feel? Or is something going on in your life that's emotional that is affecting your thoughts? We're just observing right now, observing as we go closer to the center. All these are layers, the layers of you. I'm just simplifying that process or the understanding of what the layers are. But if you go even deeper than the mind level, your awareness, the, the, the layer where you can sit in awareness of all those layers is even deeper. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give it a physical location. So if you bring your awareness to this place it's behind your breastbone in the center of your chest just think of it as a space that you hold for possibility for whatever it is you need in any given moment. When you breathe, how's the space affected? And let's revisit what it means to move into your center. 
Has anything changed from when you first sat down in terms of, of how you feel on all those layers? We'll come back and revisit that at the end as well. So take your time and you can either open your eyes or keep them closed. Just take your time turning your head towards the right. And go whatever is a comfortable distance to travel where you don't feel pain and you're not pressing, you're not forcing it. Take a couple of breaths where your head is. And if breath, a breath observance is not something that, that you enjoy, that it, it's a trigger for you on some level of, of anxiety, then just think of it as a couple of moments. Every time I say breath, say think to yourself moments. And then let's come back to the center. Take your time. Let's think of all the, the muscles that are now engaging. Some muscles are engaging, some muscles are releasing to get your head back to the center and then go the other way, over to the left. You might not know what the muscles are, but can you feel where they are in your body? Did your body shape change at all when you turned your head to the side? And we'll stay here for a few moments. Can you feel as if you've shortened one side of your torso? in order to feel like you've turned your head further. Okay, and let's come back to the center very slowly, very mindfully. Imagine that some muscles are engaging to turn, some have to let go. The ones that turned your head to the side have to let go. And then go back to the right. And I'm gonna let you just play with this a little bit. We can speed it up a little bit more. So to the right, back to the center. You're not whipping your head around, but notice as you turn your head left and right, can you turn further on one side than the other? Is it easier on one side than the other? Do you have pain on one side or the other? Do you have any compensation that's happening? So for example, as you turn your head to the right or left, doesn't matter, does one shoulder lift? Does your body kind of collapse on one side, shortening the side of your torso? So be true to the movement and be true to this place where you've brought your awareness in the center. Think of everything else revolving around that. We'll go one more, whatever side you want to finish on. And then back into the center. Connect your head coming back into the center with the center, your heart center. And then we'll go side to side. So tip your left ear towards your left shoulder. Same deal. We're just moving the head. Or are we? <laughs> Come back to the center. And then go over to the right. It was a little bit faster than we did the first exercise. Notice as you go over to one side, and you can repeat that. Do you feel stretch? I feel like as I take my head to the left, my body wants to shorten and tip over to the left. So I wanna resist doing that right now. I'll give you a chance to do that. Just working on the mobility of your neck without letting any other parts come into play. So what muscles do you feel? And you don't have to know the names, just where do you feel? What do you feel? And then we're gonna do one last time, whichever side you want to. And then I'm gonna combine these and I'll tell you how. So back into the center. So first we do a rotation. Uh, sorry, first we'll do the drop your right ear towards your right shoulder and then rotate your head to the right. It's a different story now. Come back into the center and lift your head up, returning your head to the center. And we do the same on the left side. So your head tips to the left. Notice even if your 
sit bones change weight and then rotate your head. So we're stretching out this big muscle along the side of the neck on the right side called the uh, sternocleidomastoid. And then come back up. And do this a few times on your own. So it's kind of separating the actions. It's a head tilt first and then a head rotation. And notice if your body is turning. Notice if your weight is changing how you're sitting. Even notice if you can, the weight in your feet. Does the weight in your feet change? Okay, last one. Well, we'll do, yeah, last one, whichever side. <laughs> Whichever side you think, oh, that feels really good on that side. And then come back into the center. Okay, so now you can open your eyes if they're still closed and just notice. If your eyes open, does anything change? Can you still stay in that place of center? Just drop your arms down, kind of wiggle your shoulders a little bit. Let your body kind of do a little bit of a shake and jiggle. Maybe come forward. Go back. I think there's a dance like this, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, some good shaking going on online. <laughs> okay, and then let's just take arms out to the sides. We're just going to kind of test the waters and see what happens when we move arms. And ideally, this part of the body, I'm going to say across the top of the shoulder, doesn't lift up. And instead, it, it almost drops down. Is that possible to get that part of the body drop down? And then you can play with how high your arms go, seeing how far can they go without this engaging. And that's the upper fibers of your uh, trapezius muscle. It's like a big triangle in the back of the body. And these upper fibers, they, they come from the neck and out towards the shoulder. So they want to, they want to help you. They want you to do this. They want to engage because they're so used to engaging, especially if we're on the computer a lot <laughs> or driving a lot. And if you find it's difficult, one of the things you can do is just on purpose shrug and then drop them. So you can feel a definite difference. Okay. And then you can come back. How far up you go depends. We don't want to force it. There's no gold stars in this class to get your hands, your arms in any position. And then stay up. Keep your left arm up, but drop your right arm down. Find the seat of the chair, maybe even a leg. Depends on your chair. We have these folding chairs. So I'm going to hold on to the back of the chair. And, and this arm doesn't have to be vertical. It's wherever you can be without it engaging. And then start to slide down. I guess I'm on the front leg of the chair. Slide down and come back up and bring your arm down. And we're going to go the same side, lift up, slide down. And notice if you're shifting your weight. What I want to do, what I'm feeling is I'm shifting and I put more weight in the right side, my right leg, my right sit bone. But what I want to do is have the same amount of weight in both sides so that the opening is different higher up through my rib cage. You can also bend an elbow here. We'll do one more like that. Just that little bit of opening through the side of the body and then come back down. Take a breath here. Notice if it's any different, you have more ability to expand through that side of the body. And then let's go up again with both arms. Wherever you happen to be, you can even be here with bent arms. This is the, the, the measurement where you're not engaging your upper trapezius. In fact, you almost feel like as your arm goes up, it goes down and it's just ever so slightly. I'm not going to say you have to have straight arms. Notice what part of your body is engaging. If this is starting to feel fatiguing, I'm going to tell you you're using them. <laughs> okay, last time. Let's go up. We got to go to the other side. 
So right arm stays up wherever that happens to be. Left hand comes to the seat of the chair or a leg of the chair and, and see, do it on purpose. Lean over and put more weight into your left sit bone and your left thigh. So that when you come back, you feel, oh yeah, I'm rocking my pelvis back. So sometimes we have to kind of feel what we don't want to do and then learn how to do it in a way that will give you something different. So notice as you're doing that, as you're putting your weight there, what is happening? If this side is lifting, it's like you're losing your anchor. But if then you keep your pelvis level and equal weight on both sides, then I'm keeping my anchor. I actually can feel like I'm actively pushing down through this hip. And then I'm moving this into the side of my body. I'm lengthening and opening up between my ribs. Yeah, notice if you're breathing. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not breathing. Okay, and let's come back down. Hands to your thighs. Feet can be wide. Start to slide forward. We're just sliding forward, keeping the spine in that same shape and then come back. We're gonna just do that a couple of times. You just see the difference it, between hinging right here at your hip creases, keeping your spine long versus rounding your spine. So I want you to notice, notice a few things. Are you, and I'll go sideways so you can see, are you leading with your chin? We just released so much around the head and neck. Can you just keep your head in the same relationship to your body as you slide forward and how far you go, it's up to your body. What your body is able to do, wants to do. Notice too, not just your head, but what's happening with your shoulders. Are your shoulders coming forward? Because that makes it feel like you're coming forward. more. I like my hands to stay with me and I'm kind of sliding. I'm, re I'm still really keeping the the relationship of my arms to my body, pretty similar as I come forward. Okay, last time, this is a hinging at the hips. So we're kind of doing this returning to what are the basic movements that we want to look at? What are the basic things that we kind of avoid a lot of the time, the, the movements that will serve us, but we avoid them because they're not as easy. Okay, so now come back and imagine you have pencils in your ears and you're turning your head around the pencil. And then lift back up. Okay, so you don't have to actually have pencils in your ears, but you could if you wanted to. You could think it's like a rod that goes right through and you're rotating your head. <laughs> I was gonna be really gross <laughs> with an, an imagery. However you want to imagine what's happening with your head. So you're rolling around this dowel or pencils without the rest of the body moving. It will in a second, I promise. Is it possible to do this action? And think of this almost as a turning your gaze down towards that heart space and just another layer of awareness. Imagine you could see right in, what would it look like? I'm gonna take it one step further. So now head comes down. I still want you to have an awareness that your pelvis isn't moving, but can you start to let your shoulders come forward? So it means I'm not rolling to the back of my pelvis yet. I'm not rolling anywhere. I'm just keeping steady. And then very little at a time, think of rounding through the upper back. Pelvis is not rolling back. And stop when you can't go without your pelvis moving. Pelvis is staying steady in its place. You can slide your hands forward so you have some support. Good idea to have some support so you're not just hanging. And then let's go backwards. Pelvis is gonna stay steady where it is. And then I'm starting to lift up through my low back. 
mid back, upper back, shoulders go back, head comes up. So this is a rolling through the spine. Let's do it again. Take your time, roll around that dowel, gazing towards your heart center, whatever that means to you, that space that you were holding so dear. And sequentially through your spine, allowing it to round. For me, the hardest part to let round without my pelvis rolling back is my low back. So I notice as I get closer to where I want to make my low back round without my pelvis moving, I start to engage my core muscles a little bit more, the, the lower muscles right through here, through the low belly. And then come on back up. I'm going to have you do this one more time on your own. Rolling through. So your head is the last to go up. That's the first to go down. This is kind of like a cat cow. but different. I'm trying to avoid having you kneeling on your knees today. By moving this slowly and this mindfully, we are involving the muscles that don't often get used and creating more awareness. Okay, so now I'm gonna let you roll your pelvis back. Yay, because we all want to. So roll it back, come right back to the back of the chair and then sit right back up and do a little bit of a lift and an arch. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can get a little better sense. So here's my pelvis rolling back and here's me lifting up. I want to add some arms. So drop your arms to the sides. So we're going to roll forward like this, like you're holding a big ball. And then you're going to release the ball and open up. And roll. And open. And again, we're moving slowly. I want you to think about what's happening here. As you bring yourself into this position, you're shortening and engaging the muscles through the front of the body and through the front of the arms. Then we engage the muscles through the back of the body and the back of the arms. So you wanna feel maybe a little bit of a squeeze between your shoulder blades here. Feel the contrast of how you're engaging muscles, letting go of the opposite side then engaging the back body muscles and letting go of the front side. We'll do one more. Crack. Yeah, are you feeling that? <laughs> Cracking going on here in the studio. Uh, open up and then bring your arms down. Wiggle yourself towards the front, the very front, almost to the place where you'd fall off your chair, but don't. I'll, I'll switch around too, so I don't always have my back to you, Tom. <laughs> and then see, is it possible where you've placed your feet, and you can come onto your yoga mat if you want, where you've placed your feet, is it possible to lift out of the chair? So we'll just kind of experiment and see. You don't necessarily have to lift out, but I want you to see what would be, how would you get out of the chair? And today, we're not using our hands. So how would you, is it possible? I'm a little... <laughs> too far at that point and then come back down so I'm going to change I know from experience that my feet are too far out so I'm going to walk my feet a little bit closer and see if that makes a difference and then I'm going to see yeah so that movement we did before hinging at the hips that's helpful because it starts to shift my weight forward and I can feel a, a change in where my feet receive the earth and then, okay, that's a little bit better. And then we got to go back. So you know the chair is there. You know you just came up from it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's go again. Maybe see if there's a different position for your feet to go in. Maybe. Maybe you feel like, okay, that's perfect. So we're leaning. Body is long. 
So in this, in this movement, we're not rounding the spine like we just did. See if you can sit down, leading with your sit bones, spine stays long. And again, I'm gonna say, repeat, you don't actually have to come out of the chair. Leaning forward. Coming up, and we're not making use of our arms, but we could, not by pushing, but by creating a, a support. So you can, a couple of things, use your hands on your thighs. That's one place. So I'm not using the, my hands on my chair, which is a whole other thing. It's not that it's wrong, just that I'm not doing it today. I could bring my arms so they're perpendicular to my body and then reach them out to give me a bit of a counterbalance and then reach them out. So as I'm leading backwards with my sit bones, I'm actually reaching forward. So another key, 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 key point is pay attention to what direction your knees are moving in. So we'll pause for a moment. I need my knees to move in the same direction as the center of my ankle. What sometimes I'll see, and I wasn't peeking at you for that, is knees coming together. And when that happens, I shift my weight and my feet to the inner edges. But I wanna have this awareness in the soles of my feet. We can say the four corners of the feet. Lately, I've been working with the idea of the center of the heel, so right here, the big toe base and the baby toe base. So like a tripod. So let's try again, wherever you wanna put your feet, keep your weight in the center of both feet, reach forward, look where your knees are going. It's gonna create more stability for your knees when you track them like this and then come back down. And again, this is a pose called Utkatasana, sometimes referred to as chair pose. It's too much. If it's too much, you feel like you need to take a break, take a break. If you have pain, you can unmute and say, hey, I'm, I'm getting pain. Can you watch me? Otherwise, you're just working on strengthening. And I changed the name of this class to the gentle and therapeutic. So <laughs> we've got gentle, which is like the restorative and the meditation. But the therapeutic means part means sometimes you're going to work a little bit harder. It's going to be challenging. Okay, last one. Last one down. And last one up. And as you come up, pause part way. Where can you hold it? Which, where in that range can you hold it with your knees bent? Because you can do it with your legs straight, but then you're not going to engage your legs here. As you're resting here, bring your hands to your, your, your hips, the top of your pelvis, and notice where your knees are facing. Are they turned in or are they turned out? Notice where your weight is in your feet. The front of your shins are working, right? Your quadriceps, the front of your thighs are working. If you have pain in your knees, not necessarily come out, but you could come out, but you could also back out a little bit. In order to strengthen muscles, we have to take them to the point of fatigue. It's just the way it works. Okay, come stand up and notice what you feel. Everybody okay? Give a shake, shake and a jiggle and a wiggle. We're like halfway through the class already. Let's move the, the blankets off the seat of the chair. And you can set your chair up at the end of your mat. Now it's possible that you might need a little more height. So maybe just for now, put your blocks here just so you have them in case you need them, in, in case you need to go higher. I don't know about you, but I feel like I've run a marathon. <laughs> My legs are fatigued. <sighs> We're going to start with a, uh, a pretty high um, downward dog on the chair. So bring your chair a little bit closer to you and bring your hands to the back of the chair. Actually, I'm going to say bring them to the sides of the chair. 
And then walk your feet back. And as you walk back, take them wide, as wide as your mat. So instead of sitting and hinging at your hips, you're standing and hinging at your hips. Can you find the same shape of your spine without your upper trapezius muscles engaging? Try bending your knees. Again, bending your knees, facing them in the same direction as the center of your ankle, and then pulling your sit bones, the bottom of the pelvis backwards, in order to create some, a little bit of traction in your spine. So you pull back as if you're trying to move your, your hips away from the chair. Again, you can stay higher. Notice how much engagement your back is doing. It's okay if you need to engage here a little bit. Can you make the spine a little bit more neutral? Where do you have to adjust to be a little bit more neutral? And then one more moment here or one more breath. Looks pretty good. Then lift up, bring your hands to the seat of the chair. And this is where you might need the blocks stacked up. I'm gonna say, hold, hold on to the sides or go higher like this. You can kind of play with it and see. Step your right foot forward until it disappears underneath, this, underneath the chair. And then step your left foot back so it stays on its own side, but your toes face forward. Okay, just see the shape. Can you be long through your spine here or do you need to come higher onto your blocks? It's, it's the same, but different. We've got a straight leg in front, but we want the relationship between the thigh and the body to be the same as when we were sitting and leaning forward. Put a little bit more pressure into your big toe base. Can you find your big toe base? And I'll show you again on me. It's this part right here. I think I'm going to get a foot model just like my pelvis model. I think I'm going to be using it a lot this year. <laughs> so you put pressure into that part of the foot. And that's going to help create a lift through the inner arch. As long as you keep the other points connected, just adding a little bit more to the base of the big toe. From there, pretend you're trying to pull your leg away from your toe. So I'm trying to pull and make my leg longer by pulling my hip back more. So the right hip goes back of the front leg. Yeah, you got it. As the right hip goes back, consider what you're feeling. What I'm feeling, and I wanna keep my big toe base down, I'm starting to feel more of a lengthening, a sensation of stretch along the outer right side of my thigh at the back. Anyone else feeling that? Yeah, okay. And I'm feeling a, a lengthening, a stretch sensation through my, my, the back of my left calf. Yeah, okay. So now let's bend the front knee, bring it forward, until it reaches the chair. So your shin is gonna be vertical. You might need to reposition your foot. When you did that, did you lose the connection or lose that support and, and weight in your back foot? Let's try again, Mo move towards straight and come higher if you need to. Move the front leg towards straight and feel how your weight shifts into your left foot. Then keep the weight in your left foot as you bend your front knee. So it's kind of like the action is like I'm pushing backwards as so if I wanted to slide my left foot back. Let's do that a few times. Bend forward. I want to keep the same amount of pressure and weight in my back foot as I take my front knee forward. Okay, one more time. Bring it forward until your knee is over your ankle, your shin is stacked. So now we got to get our hands off the chair. We could just kind of throw caution to the wind, but I want to go with a little bit more <laughs> awareness. So we want to keep the weight in the feet. Let's come up with a plan. Bring your hands to your thigh. So we're transferring weight from there to here. Okay, so now we still can't just throw ourselves off the, off the chair or off the leg. Start to walk up your thigh a little bit. Use your weight here, your hands on your thigh, to bring you to a place where there's a little bit more ease to take your hands away. I still have the same amount of weight in both feet. My front knee is bent and it's tracking. 
So the front knee is in that Utkatasana position. Take your arms out to the sides. Again, we did this before at the beginning, so it doesn't have to be anywhere in particular. And I'm gonna go this way so you can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna lean over towards the right. So remember when we, we anchored the sit bone, imagine your left sit bone is traveling down towards the ground and you're leaning over to the right. It could be here. So now we're lengthening, getting a stretch sensation through the front of this hip and thigh. You look like you're dancing. <laughs> and then come back and bring your arms down. I'm gonna get real tricky. Lift the back heel off the ground. So we're getting a little bit of an action through the sole of the foot, a little bit of stretching, come forward and up. As you come down, because I wanna take the arms and shoulders in all the positions, this is called shoulder extension, pull your elbows back. Again, without letting those upper trapezius muscles engage. So how far back you go depends on your body. There also might be a tendency as you're doing this for your body to go more into a back bend like this. So I wanna have that little bit more of a pure movement through the shoulder joint. Back down into the warrior one shape. And last one. Last one. Okay, and then bring your arms down. You okay, Tom? Tom's gonna wish he didn't come. <sighs> then step back, we'll get a little stretch to the calf muscle. So your downward dog, so you can come back up higher if that served you better to be higher, or you can come to the seat of the chair. You can experiment. This is about like, this is a lab, a science lab for you to kind of play with different outcomes. When, when I do this, cause and effect. When I do this, this happens. When I do this, this happens. To learn, well, I'm not gonna do that again because that's starting to feel yucky. And that's not scientific talk, of course. So hinging at the hips, bending your knees, putting your weight evenly in both feet in those tripods and feeling length through the sides of the body and the sides of the arms traction then start to pull yourself up we have a second side to go step your left foot forward so you can kind of guess you know where we were before i ended up having you have your shin vertical so you can kind of play with that and then step your right foot back how far back it's it's up to you so we're going to hold this first and press into left big toe base and think of it almost like, I'm gonna get a little resistance band here just to demonstrate. So if I have my resistance band underneath my left big toe here, and I have this attached from there up to my outer hip, to straighten my leg, I'm pushing down into that resistance band and I'm gonna pull back on this end. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I push in order to pull, but yeah. And then I can use that. I'm stable in my legs. I can lengthen through my spine, not just lift my head, but take my chest broad and forward. This is where you kind of go, maybe I'm too low. Maybe I need to go, uh, I can do it when I'm here but I'm not quite there yet, or I'm not quite there yet. Okay, so then start to bend your front knee and notice what we did the first time around was notice if your weight comes away from your right foot, your back foot. Do that a couple of times. And then let's make, uh, make it very clear to the right foot that it needs to stay put. You can adjust it if it's really lifting off. Four corners of the back foot stay rooted in the ground or, or three, the tripod. Then bring your knee forward to stack over your ankle without losing that connection in the back. 
There's your big calf stretch. Okay, so then bend it, hold it. We've got weight in both feet. I really feel like I'm, I'm working through the front of my right foot and shin, right uh, ankle, I should say. But I wanna get up, I wanna stand up and I don't wanna just throw myself up. Bring your hand, one hand to your thigh. See if it's possible to transfer your other hand. If not, you can keep your maybe fingertips here. Start to lift up, support yourself until your body, your core can take over and support you there. And I've got my front knee bending and leaning forward, uh, tracking over the center of my ankle. Uh, and then I get this opening through the front of my right hip. Take your arms up to wherever you wanna take them. Remember upper trapezius, and then start to lean over towards the left. Think of the anchor. I wanna anchor down through my right sit bone. So I don't want, I don't want to move too much through my pelvis. I wanna lift and move above my pelvis. So I'm anchoring. You can even say your anchor goes all the way back to your back foot, that foot that we, we secured down there. A few more breaths into the side of the body. A few more moments here. Awesome, great to be in the company of people practicing yoga. Come on back, bring your arms down, lift on your back, up your back heel. So we shorten the calf and then we stretch it. And then we shorten it. And we also think of, of what's happening, feel what's happening in the sole of your right foot. When you land your right heel down, imagine you're landing right in the center of it. Not at the front edge, right in the center. Okay, so let's take the same arms because we can. Actually, I'm gonna change them. Bring your arms back like this to wherever you can be without upper traps moving. And the movement is gonna be like this. As you go up, we go out. So it's a rotation. So feel where the movement is coming from. Your shoulder blades, the muscles around the shoulder blades are turning. So the inside border of your shoulder blades moving in towards the front of the body. Yeah. So you're going in the range that works for you without compensation and without holding your breath. Repetition is the mother of skill, but also the, the fatigue builder of the muscles to strengthen them. Okay, last one. It's like this. <laughs> okay, so we reverse it. Come forward, so it's a forward bend to the back, the blocks, or the seat of the chair. One last time in your chair, dog. First, I'm using the chair, but anytime you want to move the chair away and do a downward dog on the ground, it's the same principles. We want to hinge at the hips and keep the spine long. The beginning of the practice, we looked at different ways. Come back into the center of your body, which isn't going to say is your heart center. <sighs> Slowly make yourself, make your way back up. And as you come up, you can walk forward. And then we'll move the props out of the way. Because we have the chairs here today, uh, I, I, can, I can absolutely suggest, but you don't have to take that. Putting a blanket on there again. If you have a second blanket, really great idea to support your head. And I'll show you a way that I really like to support the head. So the blanket is like this. Fold it like this, so it's just a little bit short. That's, this is for your shoulders. This is for your neck and head, and the edges curl in like that. 
So when you come and lay down, and, and you're more than welcome, Carol, especially you, if you want to uh, sit in the chair. Or I will always say, if you want to practice, if you're at home, you want to practice in your bedroom, you can always lay down in your bed for any of the stuff that we do lying down. So I'm, I'm letting my shoulders rest on the front edge. And then I'm taking these two parts that I, that I rolled and I'm pulling them in and I'm wrapping them into my neck and head and cradling my head. It's just one option. There's other ways to do it. You like it? Yeah. yeah. It's just when, when the muscles around the neck, the nerve endings get the sense around the neck and head that they don't have to hold your head up anymore, then, then the muscles let go. And just for a moment, bring your hands to the center of your chest. Come back if you've lost the connection to the center and remind yourself about your contemplation about centering, and what that means to center yourself or to be in your center. And then whenever you're ready, because I know it's challenging to hold your hands there, move your hands away, but have a little bit of a feeling that your hands are still there, giving you that support and awareness of, of your heart space. Come back to the physical layer of the body. What do you feel now? We started off slow and we built to move more, feel more. What do you feel? What are the effects of the practice now in your body? In your energy level, turn up the lights here for you your mental and emotional body. And I say body because they are bodies. They're like a layer, a, a perfect imprint of your entire physical body, but in an energetic shape, an energy, an energy. So just notice Notice whatever the conditions of your body are in this moment. Notice whether you're incredibly comfortable or incredibly uncomfortable. Whatever the conditions of the mind, whether your mind is empty and peaceful or full of different thoughts and agitated or little of both. Do you want um, a bolster under your knees instead? No, just just Oh, you might find that a little bit. Let me let me try it. Let's try. It. Put this under your knees. A little bit better. Yeah. Notice whether your mind is empty and peaceful, or full of different thoughts and agitated, or a little of both. Notice the quality of stillness, of spaciousness that sits beyond push and pull, beyond what's pleasant and unpleasant. Notice at the deepest level of who you are in this moment, whether there's a natural quality of contentment Below all those layers. You can rest in this moment and allow yourself to be deeply satisfied. No more searching, no more seeking. You're just here. And notice that the more deeply you touch into this quality of rest, the more able you are to accept this moment, all of its rewards, 
gifts and challenges. And this quality of acceptance, your ability to be present can naturally arise. Take some time here, totally at rest, fully present to everything in this moment, exactly as it is. Hear the sound of my voice. And as you begin to move and breathe and wake up everything, leave a door open for yourself to come back to this place at any time. To access these qualities in the still point as often as you need to and whenever you remember. This little tiny point of existence within that heart center space that is still and it's yours to find, yours to discover again and again and again. So if you are at home and want to stay resting and you know, you found that sweet spot and want to stay there, go ahead if you have the time and inclination. And if you're ready to move, you can let your body respond to my words, however it wants to respond with movement. Maybe a shift in breath, maybe wiggles, maybe stretches. And then you can move towards sitting and you can sit up on your chair or on the ground, what, whatever is the most convenient and will serve you the most in this moment. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> Tom doesn't want to move. I don't have anything in here after, so you can always stay. Like, and that's a total invitation. Please stay longer if you um, ever want to. We'll just walk around you. Can't promise it'll be quiet though. <laughs> So I want to thank you all for coming back and joining me again. Have a great day. Thanks for returning. Namaste. That was lovely. Sure, that's good.